If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. When you do, make sure you hit the notification bell. That means that you will be informed of when a new video has been released. If you would like to take that support one step further, you can do that via Patreon, which is an optional monthly service you can donate money towards the channel. Or you can go over to Kofi. Dot com and for the price of a coffee you can help donate towards the channel as well links for all of those will be in the description of the video and without further ado enjoy the video hello and welcome to football coaching 101 hosted by james and adam from the non-league nosh presented by james bloomfield football coach in non-league football the series in which we will be introducing you to coaches from the professional game gaining their insight and knowledge into the beautiful game that we love. So sit back and enjoy. Okay, welcome to another episode of Football Coaching 101. Um, I really hope everyone listening to this has enjoyed listening to the career and the ups and downs and everything to do with Zavon Hines' football playing career. I'm really excited to, to have you on and, and chat through um, a brief chat around your coaching career so far. Um, and I want to start off with um, sort of how early did you know, whilst, was it whilst you were still playing that you wanted to get into coaching? Um, was it a sort of last minute decision? So sort of how early did you know that that's something you wanted to do? It was last minute, if I'm honest, um, because when I was playing, I always said, oh, I can't. because some of the coaches I've had, it was awful. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I always <laughs> I always said to myself, no, nah, I don't want to be a coach. I don't want to be involved in football. But yeah, I loved football too much not to be involved in it in some capacity. Um, so when I decided that I'm going to retire, um, uh, Jack Collison was the manager of the under-18s at West Ham. And he's one of my good friends. So um, I told him about it because he retired early and I just wanted to see how he felt when he decided he was retiring and how all of that kind of stuff. So... He told me to just come in and then just be around the boys and see how it feels and see if this is something that I like and I, I want to do. So I went into West Ham and I was just around it, around it for a little bit. But then I was also as well, I was still around at Bromley. Um, okay. So, yeah, I just enjoyed it and I, w I want to be able to impact someone's career. So I want to be able to help. And I think for me my experience, good and bad, it's kind of helped me to feel how I'm feeling because I've always had my own football academy as well in Brixton. Um, and obviously I don't coach there, but I've got coaches there. But now and again, I do get involved and coach the kids. Um, so now I, now I love it a bit more. I think if I... Um, if I stopped playing and I had to go a different route where it's not a professional route, it would have been a lot more difficult for me. Of course. So it's something you've sort of grown a love for. Like you said, I can hear I can hear by the way you're speaking. It is something that um, you sort of, you haven't pushed into it and had to get into it straight away and jumped over to it. You sort of you built up a desire to get into coaching. Um, and now, like you say, you, you really hope to impact um, the young players' careers and be able to help them in any way they can. Um, anyway, you can yeah. sort of on the back of everything you did as, as a player, which is which is fantastic. Um, so, talk to me just a little bit about West Ham in particular. Obviously, being your first role um, as a coach in football, particularly in the academy. Um, so, what what the facility is like? How how is it sort of to be involved at a club like that at academy level? Um, it's good. It's, obviously, West Ham is, is a good club. They've got a lot of facility wise. They've got obviously training pitches and 3G pitches for the players to utilise and for us to utilise as well. So facility-wise, everything's there. Um, there's a good structure to the club as in how um, to develop players and uh, there's always targets. Uh, they set targets and IDPs and there's, always, there's also coaches' development plans for the coaches to get better, um, so there's a good there's a good setup to the club itself, which is yeah. So there's lots in place, lots in place to help the players, like you say, 
in, sort of individual development pl program to the players, um, development for yourself as a coach as well. Because, like I said previously, coaching is it's a whole new journey, really. Um, yeah. There's different different qualities. Of course, you can bring the, the mental strength and um, sort of the, your experiences as a player. Uh, and the technical stuff you know as a player through playing football you can bring but it's it's such a different role um it's you're becoming a teacher really and you're dealing with personality so um obviously with coaching in, with, in younger age groups um sort of how are you finding it dealing with sort of grounding the players keeping them focused um and, and really the most important thing is you're dealing with young people as well as being footballers um they're young people yeah um Initially, it was a bit difficult because obviously, like, remember, remember, I said it's it's a new role, it's a new time in my life. So, me trying to understand them and trying to understand how to get the best out of them is how I need to, how I had to start to think because yeah. I probably weren't thinking like that initially, um, and. My frustration at times was a lot of the players didn't really feel like West Ham was a. It's a privilege to be at West Ham Academy. It's like oh, it was just another day, and um, for me because of how I grew up and I, the struggles that I kind of had, and I know how hard it is to actually make it. I what I wanted them to want it more than they showed that they wanted it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I had to deal with. I had to take the emotions out of it and try to understand them for who they are and try to engage them. But then also I had like good coaches around me that that I like I take like ideas off and speak to, and that just helps me to be better coaches. And which is good as well. Um, we had Kevin Keane's back there as well. Now he's under Ian's manager. He was my wow. first manager when I was obviously at, when I first signed for West Ham. So it, I'm learning of him as well. So it's still it, it's 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 good because I've done the rounds and I'm back and he's still he's back now, and I'm learning of good coaches that's managed at the top and up and coming managers. Um, so it's, it, it's it's good. Definitely. What what kind of things? I think the biggest question I've got for you, especially as you've um, you've been there now um, just over a year, if it wasn't for this um, going on at the moment. Um, what have you found that are the biggest things in your playing career that you've tried to sort of encapture and, and take into your coaching? Um, because obviously you've had so much experience um, to be able to guide them from, from the Premier League down the divisions and even tell them about how difficult it is to play in the National League. Because um, I think that that's the realistic side is some of those players, although they may not appreciate how really the privilege of being in academy football, wherever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what are the biggest things you took from your, your playing career to sort of add to your coaching? Um, the biggest thing I, I, I keep saying to them is to actually know why they want to become a footballer. Um, because that's what got me through my career, knowing why I started in the first place. Um, I say to them all the time know why you want to become a footballer because the why is what will get you through the hard times and yeah, uh, now carry on yeah and I was just saying the why the why will get you through the hard times so for me because I knew what my why was my why was I wanted to be able to provide for my family or be able to play in the Premier League up get to the top I knew I had to work hard but I also knew that there could potentially be injuries I might not get picked for the team. I might get dropped down the leagues, but I still wanted to push and provide. And I said that there will be obstacle, obstacles and all of that kind of stuff. But the why is the end goal, and the end goal is what you need to push towards. Um, so that's what I took from my career is to understand that there will be ups and downs. There will be um, managers that <laughs> won't understand you, and I, like I said throughout this podcast that they probably won't understand you but um, I've learned to think differently and try to understand players before I make a judgement like I said definitely taking the human quality really again that, <laughs> I think it's been a theme throughout the evening that 
that human quality if you can take some of that I think it's so important and I think it can be missed sometimes and another thing you've mentioned again in your podcast around your playing career was um, the personal side um, sort of coming more and more important now and, and clubs sort of supporting players a little bit more um, yeah so it's, it's, it's fascinating to hear sort of your take on that uh, and the last thing I really want to know um, before we finally let you go tonight is what are you thinking next um, so you're at West Ham at the moment um, you're coaching the academy is that something that you want to take forward and sort of go through the age groups and on to become a first team coach as a manager or sort of what is the pathway that you're thinking in your own mind at the moment um, I'm not sure I just like I said I just wanted to I, I want to enjoy this time I just want to enjoy and learn as much as I can and then probably reevaluate in a year's, year time or so but deep down inside, because of the experience that I had in the non-league, I really want to do something in the non-league that's different. Yeah. yeah. And create a culture and an environment and a team that defy all the odds. And because of whether it's the style of play or whether it's the the environment that we create, I just, I, in the future, if that's possible I would really love to do something like that but for now I know I know I need to do a lot more learning a lot more get a lot more experience um, and just understand the game a lot more because I think there's a lot the game is very complex but very simple at the same time if you understand the right moves definitely um, Zavon I can only say again thank you ever so much for giving us so much of your time um, talking through previously your playing career and moving into your sort of introduction into coaching of I've loved listening to all of it and yeah I can only say a massive thank you for sort of sharing it all with us sharing your experiences um and sort of being able to pass that on to the listeners no problem um, like I said I hope, I hope it was beneficial and I, I like talking about football and for me personally uh, um, if I could help by just speaking about what I went through good and bad then I've done my job. So, um, yes, for me, I enjoyed it and I like talking about it. So it's, it's a privilege. Thank you very much. So if you have enjoyed listening to the podcast um, and listening to the story of Zavon Hines as much as I have, um, please do hop online and follow Football Coaching 101 uh, on social media uh, and follow Non-League Nosh as well to hear stories from professionals at the very top of the game all the way through to the non-league um, football that we all know and love. Thanks for listening.